quickly before we get into this video, I just want to say that this is a content warning. Do not go past this point if you cannot handle disturbing imagery. If you can, then that's fine. Go ahead and continue. But if you cannot, uh, I'd say at least check the content warning that I've linked in the description and be sure to see if any of that applies to you. If you cannot handle some of the stuff uh, that is mentioned in there, then do not watch past this point. Anyways, thank you for watching and let's get into the video. Hello guys and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went over to Sayori's house and we learned that uh, she actually suffers from depression uh, and has been her whole life. And after that revelation, we thought of maybe canceling our plans with Yuri, but Sayori really, really wanted us to hang out with her. So we're going to go ahead and hang out with Yuri. And, uh, or we have been hanging out with Yuri, in fact. We started making the decorations, then some weird stuff happened. Go check out the previous episode if you haven't seen it yet. Anyways, let's go ahead and get back into this. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. We'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-sized glasses. I, pu I put them in the plate to catch any paint that drips, and then put bring it back to my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, we'll write inspirational quotes across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, uh, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me... I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you would understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Kya! Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? N no, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ugh, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. 
I rush out and fetch a small towel, then dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Ah. Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want us to- I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But then, suddenly, Yuri holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just... for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah. Uh, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense- it's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers, wrapped around my wrist, send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah! Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here than have you bring it in in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? Yeah, that's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Whew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about the time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah. So you don't have so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be much more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all our things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out somewhere. Uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway. You know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, MC. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S Sayori? Huh? Uh, hi, MC. Sayori! Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, MC. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, oh, really? It's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course. 
Sayori beams. Yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to roll down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, MC? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, MC. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. B but Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, MC. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... I'm scared that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. MC, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And... And... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Sayori. I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So... There's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. MC... Suddenly, Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. MC, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, MC. I want, you, I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now? Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, MC. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Uh, okay. I... Trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. 
will go whatever pace suits you best. Hey, MC. Sayori gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me. Right? Eh? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I... I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you loved me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her. And that she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her. I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know, but I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But, I, but knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. MC! You're the first one here! Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we were performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like, and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that. But I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all? <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, MC. I mean, especially after your exchange for, with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're... a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica's being as friendly as usual. But for some reason, I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh, yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognized Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the other from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one I haven't read before. 
Get out of my head, 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 get out of get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Ugh. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit into my stomach. MC? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else I always written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Sayori, so... Ah. Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her, or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer, since she's not picking up her phone, either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I'm, I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't that kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal just up until just a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayori needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I'd just spent a little more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just... lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can... Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance, and I wasn't careful enough. Now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now... I 
I could never take it back. Never. 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 I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw from herself. That girl is Sayo, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayu Sayu catch up to me. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that but I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with them. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. MC? Monica. Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Ah. Uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did, you, what did you come in here for, anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my, my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? <laughs> About that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that, in that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of... dull. How many members do you have so far? Um... <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry... I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, MC. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, MC, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. 
So, with us about to join the Literature Club, I think this is a good place to end off. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and, like I said, join the Literature Club and see what sort of crazy cast of characters awaits there. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye! <laughs>